So for more on this, we can speak to Amish Adalja. He's a senior scholar at the John Hopkins University Center for Health Security. Joins us live from Pittsburgh now. I just want to pick up on the point that Mike Hanna was making there about the thousands of cruise ship passengers stranded off the coast of San Francisco while they go through a process of, of testing. How concerned are you about the, the testing capacity or the slow rollout of diagnostic testing? It's been a major problem in the United States, and it's really uh, refrained us from actually being able to understand what spread is going on in this country. And we all suspect that there's community spread going on in many states. And the fact is that our tests, tests are not in the hands of doctors, that there are strict testing protocols that have made it very difficult to get a handle on this. And I think when we see more cases diagnosed, it's going to add to the panic because uh, people are going to be surprised by it. But it should be no surprise. And we really need to get diagnostic testing scaled up and in the hands of doctors. How do we do that? It's going to take a lot of effort. We're going to have to keep increasing the ability of our state health labs to, to do testing. The commercial labs are starting to be engaged. And we're also going to have testing kits that are available commercially going through the process of getting uh, approved by the FDA. This is going to take some time. It's probably going to be weeks before we get the U.S. where we need it to be in terms of testing, that we should be able to test for this just the way we can test for influenza. Uh, but, of course, it's not just the U.S. Testing capacity is also of some concern in Italy and Iran. I mean, these are, are all big countries. I, I guess what all this means is that we just don't have an accurate grasp on the number of cases or where the virus could be spreading to next. Right. And we've seen countries like South Korea, for example, which has drive through testing, really be able to go out there and test as many people as they possibly could. And what happened there was the case fatality ratio fell to 0 0.6. So I think that gives us really important, actionable information. Knowing how many mild cases are out there, it really helps us right size the outbreak response and, and really gives the public some kind of estimate on how to think about this in terms of the risks in their lives and what risk this poses. Remind us of what we know about the mode of transition, because we've now passed the 100,000 milestone of cases. I mean, that is just an estimate. Just remind us what we know about how the virus is spreading. So this virus efficiently spreads through the respiratory route. So that means coughs and sneezes and the droplets that come out of your mouth or your nose that travel for about six feet and then fall to the ground. So it spreads in a manner similar to influenza. It can also be spread from surfaces, but that's probably not the main thrust of transmission. It's really person-to-person -person transmission, and it does it efficiently. So that 100,000 number is a as underestimate because we are not testing mild cases routinely. So there are more cases out there than that 100,000 that are confirmed. And the problem with that is that even, I mean, if, gosh, you might have mild symptoms or you might not have any symptoms, but you're still passing it on. Right. People that are more symptomatic are more contagious. Those with mild symptoms, there's some debate um, whether how contagious they are. And those with no symptoms at all, there, there's a lot of debate over whether or not they're very contagious. Maybe they are contagious towards the end of their incubation period, just before symptoms appear. Um, but that's still not what's the thrust of this outbreak transmission. It's really the symptomatic people who are coughing and sneezing, the household contacts of cases. That's where we're seeing this transmission uh, occur. And uh, so it's that you have to be close to someone who is coughing and sneezing. But of course, if someone then coughs on themselves, or on, on their hands and touches something, then it can be passed that way as well. How do we know, do we have information about how long the virus lives on surfaces? So you can look in lab studies and you may see that, that the virus is present for several days. But remember that those are lab studies that have certain controlled environments with certain UV radiation exposure, certain humidity, certain temperature, which may not reflect the, what goes on in, in normal life. So I would say from hours to maybe a day or so, you will find this virus viable on a surface. But it's not necessarily going to be the main way that people are getting this. But it is important to wash your hands a lot, touch your face less, and to clean surfaces that are common touch surfaces. Handrails, doorknobs, uh, desks, countertops. Right. So if containment doesn't appear to be working. What then is the alternative? Is this something that people just have to get used to? It will it will become endemic, there will be millions of infections, and it'll be as, as common as the flu. Is that the, the scenario that's likely? That's what, we're, that's what we're anticipating, that this is going to be a virus that becomes seasonal, that it becomes something that we're going to have to cope with until there's a...
pain test to be sort of the new normal, just like 2009 H1N1 influenza. That virus became one of our seasonal flu viruses. So containment was never really possible for a virus of this type. And I do really need to come to the point where we think about mitigating this, working on getting our hospitals prepared, increasing diagnostic testing, vaccine development, antivirals, all of that. Those are things that we need to, to do moving forward as that containment is not going to be feasible and it's going to eat up a lot of our precious resources. Thank you for your analysis on this. Appreciate it. Amesh Adalia uh, from the John Hopkins University Center for Health Security there. Thank you.